how many Kiwi parents are supporting adult children? Oh, so loaded because Michael is a mortgage broker. 80% in some capacity. Um, I'm going to go 60% are supporting their kids in some form. I don't know the exact percentage, but it's 1 million New Zealanders are supporting their adult children. Welcome to Checks and Balances. I'm Stephanie Powell from Crayon. Today I've taken over the show. I've got James and Mike with me and we're going to talk about parental leave and we're going to test their knowledge on it. Thank you to Partners Life for sponsoring this episode. So Stephanie, thank you for having us on as a guest. I'm excited. Let's get into it. So Mike and I have no idea what's going on today. Shout out to Louisa and Madeline for giving us these cool paddles. We're going to be answering questions or trying our best to answer questions. I'm going to be guessing the answers on parental leave policy. Yeah. yeah. So Stephanie, over to you as the host. Okay, let's go. Number one, parental leave entitlements are only available to parents who welcome a child by birth. True or false? Excellent. Correct. So in New Zealand, the same entitlements apply whether you welcome a child by birth or you're taking permanent responsibility yeah. of a child under the age of six. So yeah. adoption, surrogacy as a couple of examples. Yeah. And it's also gender neutral. Yeah. Mm. The, the adoption process takes a long, it's like quite hard. I mean, probably by design, it takes quite a long time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah years. Potentially. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mean to get distra- I've got a couple of same sex couples that I'm looking after, like financial plans, and they've, you know, uh, adopted children. And they've talked to me about uh, the system. And it's, it is quite a long process to be able to um, adopt a child. Yeah, we have um, a good friend and she said this publicly, but, um, you know, they tried to have a child, went through IVF, went through adoption. It was 12 years between when they first started having trying to have a child to when they finally were able to adopt their first child. That's crazy. Yeah. Question number two. A partner can be entitled to time off work and payments from the government for parental leave. Oh, true. False. Correct. Oh, Let's go. oh my. So, fun fact, New Zealand is one of three developed countries that has no paid partner leave entitlements from the government. I'm going to correct you, Stephanie. That's a sad fact. Yes, <laughs> that's right. That, yes, very sad fact. Yeah. One in three countries that um, in the develop. that's not good at all. No. So Do you know the other two countries? USA. One's really the States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Israel. If we think about entitlements, what can you get, right? So yeah. um, under the legislation, there are two roles. There's a primary carer, as they call it, and a partner. Mm. Um, a primary carer, they can be entitled to up to 12 months off work, but it depends on how long you've worked for the same employer. Yeah. So you've been at the same employer for six months, you get six months of parental leave. Same employer for 12 months, you get 12 months of parental leave. And then you can be entitled to up to 26 weeks of government payments at a cap of $712.17 per week before tax. Yeah, that 17 cents is important. Yeah, is. Every, yeah. every cent counts yeah, on yeah, parental yeah. leave. And then for partners, uh, no payments. Um, you can be entitled to up to two weeks of unpaid partners leave. So you need to have been at the same employer for six months to get one week, uh, 12 months to get two weeks. And then you can share in some of that parental leave entitlement with the primary carer. So let's say both you and your partner have been at the same employer for 12 months. Um, then you can share that 12 months um, of entitlement. But whatever you take kind of takes away from the other person's entitlement. And I have to say those six and 12 month thresholds, they're based on you working an average of at least 10 hours per week. Hold up. So like up to two weeks of unpaid, uh, legally two weeks of unpaid leave, um, and then your employer can just force you to go back to work. Is that? That's all you're entitled to. Plus, if you want to share in anything with the primary carer, um, guess the utilisation rate of that unpaid partner's leave in New Zealand. How many people are actually taking it? 20%. Uh, I'll go 40%. 4%. That's what Mimby published. Wow. Because frankly, a lot of families just can't afford yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, <sighs> yeah. Okay, should we move on to the next question? <laughs> Number three, parents can share the paid parental leave entitlement. True? False. True. Hey, yes. I won for the bag. <laughs> I'm like, I'm nervous to answer now. <laughs> <laughs> like, so if the primary carer qualifies, right, yeah. they've worked. And, and the, in, the interesting part in New Zealand is the criteria to qualify for payments different to the criteria to qualify for time off. So time off, you need to have been at the same employer for six months. For payments, you need to have worked any of the 26 weeks 
in the 52 weeks before your child is due to arrive. So that can be across multiple employers. You could be self-employed or you can be an employee. Yeah. So you can actually be in a position where you're entitled to the payments, but not the time off to receive them. Mm, right. So in that case, you need to negotiate with your employer. Yeah. So if the primary carer meets that threshold and the partner also meets that threshold, then they can transfer. But there are some pretty clear rules you need to be aware of. One, you can only transfer once. So you could transfer, you know, Hannah could have transferred to you, but you couldn't have transferred back to her, ah, right? So it's yeah. a one time, one way. It needs to be continuous. So the day after, the day that Hannah's uh, paid parental leave stops, yours would need to start. So you can't have a break in between or anything like that, right? right? So it's, it, it's very, I guess, restrictive. Mm, technical. Um, and the amount that you get paid is based on your income. So it's possible that um, parents might receive different entitlements because pay parental leave is designed to in, uh, replace your income up into that cap, mm. right? So there's just some things to be aware of. Uh, guess the percentage of parental leave that gets transferred. 10%. 3%. Yeah, you're much closer. <laughs> it just doesn't happen very much. So there is some legislation pending. Uh, it was Nicola Willis's private member's bill. It got voted down last time. She might bring it back up. And that was to allow for more flexible sharing. So yeah. to be able to take it at the same time. Um, in installments, et cetera. But to be honest, when you look at other countries that have done that, the UK is a good example. Sweden 50 years ago um, introduced it. It still doesn't really move the needle because kind of what you're, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul mm. in a way, right? Mm. Like you're taking one person's entitlement. It doesn't increase so the left net pocket, balance. Right pocket, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So yeah. it's not, it's not really just the, because I would assume New Zealand at the moment, a lot of it's to do with the knowledge of, you know, how these things work, but you're saying that's not really the, even okay. then it just, you know, and you've got to do it within the first six months, right? Mm -hmm. So often potentially they might want to tag team, but later on, yeah. you know, when one parent's gone back, and yeah. et cetera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number four, paid parental leave is the only source of government assistance available to new parents. False. False. Yeah, correct. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, we've just done an episode where you yeah. talked us through that. We got those. So let's run through what else, right? Yeah. So there are two other sources. Uh, working for Families is a scheme administered by the IRD. Um, there are four tax credits, so to speak. The one to know about um, is Best Start. So every family, regardless of their income levels, gets it in their first year or until their child turns one or they've been with you for a year. It's $69 per week at the moment. It kind of gets adjusted a little bit every year. And it starts after paid parentally finishes. So generally it's going to be about, you know, 26 weeks-ish. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you can go back to work and still get it, et cetera. Once your child turns one, it becomes means tested. And then there are three other tax credits that are mean tested. Uh, if you go onto the IRD website and you type in working for families, they've got a little calculator. You know, it'll only take you a few minutes. You can punch in your numbers and, you know, get an estimate. A uh, couple of things to really note about this one. It's based on your estimated family income for the year. So you do not want to get that estimation too low, right? Because what happens is that if you underestimate and they give you entitlements and then you put your tax returns in and it turns out you earn more than that, they will come knocking. There is a wash up and they'll say, oh, we overpaid you. You're, please, please pay us back. Yeah. Um, so you, you want to make sure you either maybe overestimate, particularly if your income fluctuates a lot, the other way to do it is you can actually apply for it, but ask for the payment to be made as a lump sum mm. after tax year end. Now there's some cash flow timing, right? You're not yeah. getting the money when you need it, but at least it's going to be the right number. So yeah. it's just something to be aware of. Um, and obviously if your income changes, you want to get on the phone to them or you know contact them to let them know. Yeah. Now the other um, source of uh, support is WINS. So they've got sole parent support, childcare subsidies, which we've touched on. They can help with emergency costs, you know, a car seat or things that your child needs for survival. Um, and again, you need to, you can go on their website. They've got a check what you can get tool. You can punch in the numbers. Sometimes there's accommodation supplement, et cetera. And this is an interesting one. One parent told me while they usually earn too much as a household to, you know, get any benefit from wins during unpaid parental leave, because she was the main breadwinner and obviously not getting any income, they did qualify for that period of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and she didn't even realize till her second kid. Yeah. So it's just something to think about, like even when you might usually not get there, it's probably still worth having a look into. And again, with wins, as soon as anything changes, you want to let them know yeah. because you do hear about, you know, MSD debt being a problem, but there are other sources out there. 
It seems strange that they just come knocking. Like <laughs> it's so. I just find it so funny the level of scrutiny they put on different people in society in different positions for like you owe us this money or we're going to do this or this. I'm like, surely there's better use of your time than, you know, trying to go around and, and, and clean up the, the washer. up. You sound like the guy that's been pulled over for the speeding ticket. Be like, come on, mate, get the real criminals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, more employers are offering parental leave benefits. As, sorry, just like it's in- – Increasing the Yeah, number? increasing the True. True. Yeah, definitely the case. Like even in the five years since I had my first kid, I've seen a lot more employers do it and also just the range of benefits. Um, so we run the New Zealand Parental Leave Register. Anyone can come off and view the parental leave policies of over 240 employers. And what you probably see in the papers is, oh, so-and-so, you know, contact energy rolls out six months or, you know, et cetera. And that's important. Don't get me wrong. You want to know how much they're paying at what rate. Um, but there's some nuances in there, right? Is it a top up or is it full pay? Mm. So a top up is, hey, you're getting the government amount. We'll kind of make you whole. Mm. There are other places that just say, even if you get the government, we'll just pay you your normal salary. Quite different yeah. economics. Mm. Um, what are they paying for primary carers and what are they paying for partners? So some of the, um, I guess, most generous policies out there will actually just say, we don't care about the titles. You're a new parent you get the benefit. Mm, yeah. um, so if I think about, you know, uh, I think there are three on the register that offer equal paid parental leave policy at six full months for both parents. So EY, tax traders, um, and, oh gosh, I've missed one. I know, I'll come back to it if I think of it. But there are only, it's it's not very, it's a very expensive policy. Oh, yeah. FNZ, they're yeah. the, the other one. Um, beyond that though, there are a lot of employers, what happens to your KiwiSaver? So, you know, are we... If we're giving you employer paid parental leave, are we going to make a contribution on that? Or actually, are we going to just say, had you been working the whole year, we'll make the equivalent of what you would have received. And we're seeing about a third of the employers on the register do that. Yeah. Um, trying to, you know, reduce that gap. Uh, what are you doing about annual leave? So are you aware of how annual leave works after parental leave? Before we move on, we talk all the time about planning and growing our wealth, but protecting that wealth is just as important. That's why having the right insurance in place can help when life goes unexpectedly. And that's why this episode is brought to you by Partners Life, a New Zealand operated award-winning insurance provider with over 300,000 Kiwis insured and 89% of claims paid. Partners Life understand that having some insurance is better than having no insurance. They have flexible and personalized solutions for any budget or situation. Check out their website in our show notes below. It's different by the company, right? Because I I know, uh, I know, uh, where we've worked in the past together, which you can probably, listeners will be able to work that out quite easily, that uh, it was based on your average income over the past 12 months, Mm. which meant that people were like, there's no point me taking the leave because it's got no value. It's essentially unpaid leave. While I know at Hannah's work at WSP, it's it's worth what it's normally worth. That's right. So the legislation um, called the parental leave override or carve out says, you know, when you come back from parental leave, any leave that you became entitled to while on parental leave or in the 12 months after your return, when you go to take it, it's paid at your average weekly wage or weekly earnings only. So hypothetically, you take a year of parental leave, you don't get any payments from your employer, you come back, you need to take a day of annual leave very soon after coming back, worth close to zero, Mm. right? And so a lot of people get a bit of a paycheck shock. They take some leave and then they were like, why do I have half my paycheck? Yeah. That's why. I know some people take like... uh, before they take their parental leave, they'll use all of their annual leave beforehand because it's it's worth its total value opposed to taking it on the other side because it's worth nothing at that yeah, point. Yeah, and that's a big one. Do you want to run down your annual leave balances to kind of maximize the value from it? Mm, yeah. yeah. So, you know, more employers are offering it, but what are the T's and C's? Do you need to be on a permanent contract? Do you need to work there a period of time? You know, sometimes six months, 12 months, up to two years. Um, if you decide not to go back to work, are you on the hook? Are you going to have to repay some or all of that money? You know, sometimes we see 12-month bonding. So they're just things to be aware of. But it is exciting to see more employers provide support. And then like meal kits, um, access to lactation consultants, um, extra sick days. Because when you say meal kits, yeah, you mean like works knocking on the door and going? Works, <laughs> you know, getting my food back delivered to you. Oh, oh that sounds pretty bloody yeah. good, yeah. Mike. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that say, hey, and particularly we see it from smaller employers who may not be able to have those, you know, financial, just don't have the financial resources to do the big, jazzy, mm. expensive policies, but say, look, we care about you as a person. 
you know, this is what we can do. We want it. We understand this is a, a busy period of life, et cetera. Return to work coaching or, you know, one I quite like is a, a fully funded graduated return. So often when you come back, you want to ease into it. You know, you may not want to go from being a full-time parent to full five days a week work, but some places will say, actually, you can come back at 80% or, you know, capacity, but we'll pay you for a hundred percent for a period of time, recognizing that it's a transition period. Yeah. I mean, there's quite a bit in what you've just said. The, the bonding period is a really interesting one, right? From a employer's perspective, I completely get if you're going, hey, I'm going to give you six months paid. Mm. I want you to come back and work for us for a period of time. I think that's completely fair to ask. However, on the flip side, from the parent's perspective, you might not know, you know, if you are in a position where you can choose if you go back to work or how much you go back to work, you might not know, you know, what you want until the child's there so that's that's quite an interesting one as well where maybe i don't don't know you know is leave is is isn't getting paid back in some situations that's right it is tricky you know and um do you want someone who doesn't necessarily want to be there Mm. no that's a question too yeah Yeah. but it's an investment i understand that. yeah steph i've got another question for you i know you're the host i won't promise i won't ask too many questions uh when it comes to you know you're talking to these companies do does it happen very often where you go well what's your policy and they go i haven't really thought much about it and you i don't know they go what do you think we should do does that happen so certainly i mean particularly amongst smaller employers it's it's very common that you don't have any anything in place you offer the statutory entitlements and really it's only when uh, employers have someone actually going on leave that they're like oh actually what up what is the legislation can we do more etc we definitely engage a lot with employers um, you know, through the course of them creating, uh, you know, come bring them onto the register. Sometimes they use the register to see what their peers are doing. It's like a source of inspiration. Mm, yeah. Um, and then we're working on a parental leave toolkit. So if you're an employer, but you don't have a big HR team per se, uh, but you want to do you know, good intentions, you want to make that, um, you know, bring a policy in, we're making that a lot easier, policy templates and guides and all that. So that's something we want to do because we do engage with a lot of employers who you know, want to do more in this space, but I get it. They're busy. You know, they might have one HR generalist. Yeah, yeah. And they can't afford like the absolute best of the best in terms of uh, the leave policies, but then they work with you to go, well, actually, let's put in a plan and put some support around. That's right. Yeah. And, then, you know, it, as I, we kind of rattled off, there are quite a few different dimensions to a policy. Mm. Yeah. And mm. also what happens when things don't go to plan? Like we're seeing more around, um, you know, miscarriage, stillbirth, fertility, um, you know, or preterm, you know, the you know, parenthood journey could take, look a lot of different ways, right? Yeah. Um, and so how can an employer support people on that journey? Because yeah. the other, th- I mean, we've talk- been talking a lot about the cost to parents, but the other interesting thing is cost to businesses um, when a staff member has a child, because there's the cost of, you know, especially if you're paying for them while you're paying them while they're away, who is doing their work? Are you mm-hmm. paying somebody, bringing somebody else to come in? If you don't look after them well enough, what is the cost if they go when you have to backfill a role for recruitment and all those sort of things? That's quite interesting as well. It is, right? And what when you think about that replacement cost, right? I think it depends on which estimate you look at, but it can range from, you know, 50% to, you know, 200% of someone's salary to replace them by the time you think about interviewing time from managers and, you know, ramp up time and et cetera. So that's something to, to weigh up when you're thinking about a policy. Mm, very interesting. Number six, fathers taking meaningful amounts of parental leave is linked to higher happiness and health for the father, stronger long-term bonds between the father and child, even 10 years down the track better postpartum depression you outcomes. Can stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, yeah couple, the couple's less likely to split. Yeah. Um, the brains of fathers change on parental leave. And one of my personal favorites, for every month a father takes a parental leave, the mother's income when measured four years um, after having the child is 6.7% higher. That's for every month. Yeah. So and that's be- because they feel more supported. Is that pretty yeah, much yeah better better it? split of unpaid yeah. work? You know, the father's more confident, yeah. etc. Yeah. yeah. So Stephanie, I mean, just to give you a little tip, Mike and I need the positive reinforcement. So I mean, that was a gimme, but we did get that one right. <laughs> yeah, 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 we got that. Imagine right. if we were true. Like, yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. The less engaged the father, the better <laughs> the, the child. The outcome, yeah. it, it screws them up the right <laughs> about, <laughs> so they have a purpose to. They end up being Venus and Serena. Yeah. Williams. Yeah. yeah. 
James, I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. But <laughs> Papa, please. <laughs> Number seven, you have the same job protections on parental leave as you would if you were working. Got to be true. Okay. Oh, it depends on the definition. Um, I'm going to go false. False. God damn it. So you actually have technically under the legislation more protection. So the piece of legislation that governs parental leave is called the Parental Leave and Employment Protections Act of yeah. 1987. So One of my favourites. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Plepa, as it's as the got, lawyers. Yeah. Is that what you say on the streets, Mike? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so how does it work? If And I think this is one a lot of people worry about, like what's going to happen to my job when I go and is it still going to be there when I come back? And so legally, um, if you're going for four weeks or less of parental leave, they have to hold your job open, right? You've got to be able to come back to the same position. So different to taking a four-week holiday except for the sleepless nights yeah. and diapers, right? Yeah, there's another person in the house. <laughs> if you're taking more than four weeks, then still the, the default is that your job is held open for you, but there are um, two exceptions. One is if you hold what they deem a key position. So uh, the onus is on the employer to prove that it's a key position and they've got to show that, you know, it's either very difficult to replace, you know, to have someone temporarily replace you, you're really critical for the operations of the business, et cetera. The bar's quite high. Most jobs are not key positions. Mm. Um, and then the other one is in the case of redundancy. So you can still make someone redundant on parental leave and you certainly do see headlines about this, but you've got to follow proper process. You know, you've got to make sure you engage them, that they have time to provide feedback, that you take that feedback into account. You've also got to make sure you cannot appoint them to any other position. And the thing to note is that if you are if you don't have a position to go back to because either you had a key position and they filled it permanently or you were made redundant, you've actually got a 26-week period of preference that begins after your parental leave finishes. So what that means is during that six months, um, if a similar job comes up that you're qualified to fill, they've actually got to offer it to you first. So sometimes, even though it's disappointing not to be able to go back to your role, it can be worth using it up that period of preference so that actually it's counted as continuous employment rather than quitting and rejoining, yeah. et cetera. So it's just one thing I think a lot of people don't realize that that's actually an extra right you have under parental leave that you don't have, um, you know, as a regular employee per yeah. se. Saying that though, you know, negative James would go, you know, if a corporate, you know, corporates can find loopholes with these things, right? And go, you don't have yeah. the right level of um, experience. The other thing, which talking to people um, who've taken time off, I find quite interesting as well, is if you're taking parental leave and somebody's replacing you for a period of time, there can be this whole like, well, what if this person does too good of a job and then I'm not seen in the same light as my boss or like they want to keep this person? There's all like, all of those sort of things as well, isn't there? Totally. It's like, oh, what if they like them more than me? Yeah. Well, legally, they have to give you a job back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? And maybe they'll find another space for them in their business. Um, yeah. Okay. Final question. Actually, I'm going to do a two-parter. Mm -hmm. Guess the total cost of raising a child until the age of 18, an average cost, and how many Kiwi parents are supporting adult children? Oh, <laughs> so Loaded because Michael is a mortgage broker uh, and a lot of people get help. Do you yeah. want to guess first, Mike? I would say the cost to raise a child has got to be at least $12. <laughs> and then uh, how many parents are supporting their kids, adult children? 80% in some capacity. So the cost of a corona to raise a child at a pub, is that yeah. okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to go 250000 as the cost to raise a child and 60% are supporting their kids in some form. So it's a, just around $300,000. Yeah. And, you know, and that's an average cost, right? Yeah. And yeah. then I don't know the exact percentage, but it's 1 million New Zealanders who are supporting their adult children. It's a decent chunk. It is a decent chunk. I and mean, I guess the support thing comes from a lot of different ways, right? It's not just a cash thing. It can be living at home without paying rent, help for um, first time, a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's right. It's, it's a broad definition. Yeah. University class, I've got, you know, paying, you know, your Southern Cross. Still, <laughs> the Southern Cross is one of the funniest ones of all oh, of yeah. them. Where I've got people in their <laughs> mid 50s have gone, yeah, I've just like kept on the down low on my, my parents' policy. Yeah. Or they're paying their phone bill. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
dead, my car's broken down, I need a few bucks or or whatever it might be, can look in lots of forms, right? That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, I think the some of the scariest stats, um, and th- these are more out of the US, but parents are doing it at the detriment to their retirement savings. Mm. Oh, my goodness, Stephanie. Do not get me started <laughs> on this stuff. I, so so when I'm doing a financial plan, they will tell me about like what, what they want and uh, for themselves and what they want for their kids, and we'll bring up the projections with what they want for their kids, and I will be like, if you do this, you will not be able to have the retirement you want. Let's turn the table, Stephanie. How often do you think I get the adult to prioritize themselves over their kids? Less than half the time. Yeah, sure. it's probably about like 20% of the time I win the battle going, you're more important than your kids when when they're adults. Um, so, yeah, I'm fully on board with those numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, put your oxygen mask on first, right? You don't want your kids to have to worry about your you yeah. as you get older. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Mike, how do you think Stephanie's gone as host? I mean, I'm in danger here of being replaced. It's quite well. <laughs> Ravi keeps it. I can see he's like sharpening the knife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's actually speaking of all this redundancy chat. Mike, can you say <laughs> long after the podcast? Um, Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us um, to talk through all of this. Uh, if people want to find out more about uh, parental leave policies around how to prepare to have kids financially, where should they go? Our website, gocrayon.com. Cool. Thank you so much for having me. No, thank you for thank you for coming on. Uh, once again, there's lots to think about when it comes to have, starting a family. We'll let you work through the mechanics of how to have a kid. But when it comes to the financials of uh, preparing, understanding what your employer can do, it's really all around preparing and thinking. Thank you very much, Stephanie, for joining us. Thank you to Partners Life for sponsoring. Please make sure to subscribe, review, like. And if you've got a friend who is thinking about all of these things, make sure to send, send them the episode as well. And we will see you next time. Cheers.